Welcome back ladies and gents. In this teaching video, I'm looking at 8.1 vectors in kinematics part 1. 8.1 represents chapter 8, section 1 of the Pearson A-level maths applied maths here to textbook. I'm going to start this teaching video by going through some important facts. Let's have a look at SUVAT in vectors. There are two SUVAT formulas that we're going to actually write as a vector. The first one is V equal U plus AT and the second one is S equal UT plus a half AT squared. So we have SUVAT in vectors. Number one, V equal U plus A T. Number two, S equal U T plus a half A T squared. So we've got SU that S is the displacement vector. U is the initial velocity vector. V is the final velocity vector. A is the acceleration vector. And T is the time. Now, for an object moving with constant velocity, RT is given by R0 plus VT. RT is the position of the object at time t, R0 is the initial position of the object, V is the constant velocity of the object, and T is the time. Now, for an object moving with constant acceleration, Not constant velocity, but constant acceleration. RT is given by R0 plus UT plus a half AT squared. Now this over here is the displacement vector of the object at time T. So please notice the difference. Over here, the object is moving with constant velocity. In this scenario, you can apply this formula. But over here, the object is moving with constant acceleration. In this scenario, you apply this formula here. Again, RT is the position of the object at time t, and R0 is the initial position of the object. Now, a vector, AI plus BJ, can be written as a column vector for simplicity. So we have AB. This is a vector in two dimension. Let's extend this to three dimension. So if we've got a vector AI plus BJ plus CK. For simplicity, we can write it as a column vector. It will be A, B, C. Let's have a look at the position of an object. Firstly, we have that the position of the object is in the north direction or the south. If this happens, the I component of the position vector has to equal zero. Secondly, the position of the object is in the east direction or the west. If this happens, the j component of the position vector has to equal zero. Thirdly, the position of the object is in the northeast direction. So in the northeast direction, we have j is equal to i. So in this scenario, the j component of the position vector has to equal the i component of the position vector. Finally, the position of the object is in the northwest direction. So in the northwest direction, we have that j is equal to a minus i. So the j component of the position vector has to equal the minus i component of the position vector. In the exam, you could be asked to work out the time for which the object is in the north direction or south, the east direction or west, the northeast direction or the northwest direction. Let's have a look at exam style question one. A helicopter starts from the point with position vector 120i minus 10j meters relative to a fixed origin and moves with constant velocity minus 30i plus 40j meters per second. Find part A, the position vector of the helicopter t seconds later, part B, the time at which the helicopter is due north of the origin. Now the key part of this question is that the helicopter is moving with constant velocity. For an object moving with constant velocity, we use this particular formula to find its position at time t. 
So in part A, we want the position vector of the helicopter t seconds later. So since we have constant velocity, this implies that the position of the helicopter at time t is given by r naught plus v t. Okay, so what is r t? Well, firstly, r naught is the initial position of the helicopter, which is 120i minus 10j meters. So we have this particular vector, which as a column vector would be 120 and minus 10 plus the constant velocity of the helicopter is minus 30i plus 40j. So as a column vector, that will be minus 30 and 40. And this is my time t. So now I can multiply this column vector by t. So I've got r t is equal to 120 minus 10 plus minus 30t and then 40t. We can add the i and j component. So as a complete of single a vector, we would have 120 minus 30t and then minus 10 plus 40t. So that there is the position of the helicopter t seconds later. Part B. Uh, we want to find the time at which the helicopter is due north of the origin. So the position is due north, hence the i component of the position vector has to equal a zero. So due north implies that the i component of the position vector of the helicopter has to equal zero. So the i component is 120 minus 30t. So we have that 120 minus 30t has to equal zero. Now we can work out the value of t. So we have minus 30t is equal to minus 120. Hence t is equal to minus 120 divided by minus 30, which is four. So when the time is t equal four, meaning four seconds, the helicopter is due north of the origin. Here is exam style question two. An object moves with constant acceleration so that its velocity changes from 15i plus 4j meters per second to 5i minus 3j meters per second in four seconds. Find part A, the acceleration of the object. So for part A, I'm going to start off by writing SU that We don't know the displacement of the object. We know the initial velocity of the object. It is 15i plus 4j. We know the final velocity of the object. It is 5i minus 3j. We want to find the acceleration of the object. So we can put a question mark there. And the time taken is four seconds. So we're going to use the SUVAT formula, v equal u plus a t. So the final velocity is 5i minus 3j. For simplicity, I'm going to be using column vectors. So I've got 5 minus 3 is equal. The initial velocity, which is 15i plus 4j. So 15, 4, plus the acceleration vector, which we don't know, so we can keep it as a, multiplied by the time, which is 4. So we have 4 lots of a. So now we need to make a the subject. So 4a is equal to the vector 5 and minus 3 take away 15 4 so we have that 4a is equal to minus 10 minus 7 now we can divide by 4 on both sides so if i do this i get that the acceleration vector is going to equal minus 2.5 and minus 1.75 meters per second per second so that there completes part A. Given that the initial position vector of the object relative to a fixed origin O is 10i minus 8j meters. So that there represents R naught. Our target now is to find the position vector of the object after t seconds. If we go back to the question, the object moves with constant acceleration. And so ladies and gents, when we have constant acceleration, to work out RT, this is the formula that we use rt is equal r naught plus ut plus a half a t squared. Okay, so I'm going to apply that formula. So in part b, the position of the object t seconds later will equal r naught plus 
u t plus a half a t squared. So I can put everything in now. So I've got r t is equal my r naught, which is 10 minus 8, plus my initial velocity, 15 i plus 4 j. So 15, 4 multiplied by t plus a half. The acceleration vector is minus 2.5 minus 1.75. And then we have t squared. So at this stage, I can multiply top and bottom over here by t and top and bottom over here by t squared. Once I've multiplied these two, top and bottom by t squared, I can then multiply the components by a half and then collect the whole vector, put it together. If I do this, I end up with the following result. Ten plus 15t minus 1.25t squared. So that's my i component. The j component will therefore be minus 8 plus 4t minus 0.875t squared. Okay, so that is the position of the object after t seconds. So I can put meters at the end and that there is the icing on the cake. And that there, ladies and gents, completes part one of 8.1 vectors in kinematics. Two key things, object moving with constant velocity. This is the RT formula that you must use. Object moving with constant acceleration. This is the RT formula that you must use. Okay, so if you found this video useful, please don't forget to leave a comment, leave a like, turn on the notification bell, and make sure you subscribe to my channel.